to do that. But now we'll get on with the lesson, the kind of music that pleases God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 15. Leon's already read this verse, and I want you to really think about this as I read it again. What is the conclusion then? What is it? I will pray with the Spirit with everything in me from my heart. We heard a prayer like this this morning. Before Sunday school, we heard a prayer like that before we started this service. It was from their heart, from their inner being, their thinking, what was on their mind. They pray with the Spirit and also pray with understanding. I don't want to sit up here and mumble jumble or you can't even hear what I'm saying. I want you to hear what I'm praying about. And I want God to hear my prayer. I want Him to hear it. We're discussing that in Sunday school at length. And how misunderstood is prayer in the church today? It is so powerful. But there's so many things we've got to do to do it right. We apply that to the next rest of this verse. I will sing with everything within me from the bottom of my heart as we were singing those songs. I've said that a million times. I'll say it again. Maybe you can't carry a tune in a wash bucket. I can't. But it don't matter to God. It don't matter how loud I sing. It don't matter how soft I sing. It don't matter how bad I sing. If I'm praying or singing to God with everything in me, with everything in me, I want Him to understand what I am giving Him praises for. When I say, oh Lord, my God, how great Thou art, I mean, my God, how great Thou art. I want Him to know how I feel inside. What's in my mind? I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with understanding. This is commandments of God. And it's the Word of God that will, that will judge us in the end. Not what anybody else says or thinks. <laughs> worship. Worship is an attitude. You know, when we come through that door, I hope that we understand we are the church. We come into a building. And now we as the church, the children of God, we have an attitude. An attitude of fellowship and loving our brothers and sisters. An attitude now of praising and worshiping God. It's demonstrated our worship is uh, and expressed by the actions that we that we do. When we give today, we will give of our means, yes, but where does it come from? What we feel like we can do in our in our in our being, in our spirits. When we partake of the Lord's table on the first day of the week, Acts 20, verse 7, as you come together to break bread, on the first day of the week we're going to do that. We will not partake of that bread with a nonchalant attitude. We're going to be thinking about that precious body of Christ on that cross and what it meant to us and for us and why He did it because He loved us. When we partake of that fruit of the vine on the first day of the week, we're remembering Him up there spilling that blood and I see it washing down my face every time I go to, to prayer in the Lord's Supper. Washing my filthiness away. We do that with an attitude. And it's a divinely appointed attitude. Praising God in song has always been occupied in a place of importance in the worship of God's people. The attitude comes from our minds, our thoughts. In the Old Testament, Moses' song of deliverance, Exodus 15. David wrote 150 songs, the Psalms. Solomon wrote a thousand and five songs, 1 Kings 4.32. In the New Testament, Jesus and His disciples sang, Matthew 26.30. Paul and Silas and Philippi singing hymns, Acts 16.25. Am I getting a message from God's Word? I'm listening. John 4.23-24. We are to worship God again in spirit in my mind, in all my thinking, in my heart, and truth. I can, I can worship Him with everything in me. And if I'm wrong, it's just wrong. I'm not worshiping God. I can worship in truth based on God's Word, but if I don't have my spirit, my soul, my mind, my intellect into it, it don't go anywhere. We're neither under anything specified in instruction in the old law or in eternity in heaven. 
There was bunches of beautiful musical instruments in the Old Testament. There's going to be beautiful music in heaven with instruments. But I'm not in heaven yet, I hope. And I'm certainly not in the Old Testament anymore either. I don't deny the cross. I'm in what they call the New Testament that was established by our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I answer to that. The verses clearly imply that there are two kinds of worship. There's true worship and there's false worship. What the Bible says about true worship. John 4, 22 through 24. You worship what you do not know. But the hour is coming and now it is here when the true worshipers will worship the Father again in spirit and in truth. This, not what your preacher says, not what your friend says, not what your mommy and daddy says. What God says. The truth. But the hour is coming and now is here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking, seeking such people to worship Him. Well, God, we're here. And we want to worship You in spirit and in truth, don't we? God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit and Again, and in truth. What the Bible says about false worship, we need to know. Matthew 15, 8 and 9. See, these people draw near to me with their mouth, with their mind and their intellect, and honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Back to, I don't care what you think or what you've been taught, all I care about is what God says, right? We might could mention things like worshiping with wrong intentions or wrong understandings or without our love and our compassion and our thoughts as we practice any form of worship as we come together today. If you give grudgingly, yeah, where's your heart and where's your compassion? You might as well have thrown it in the ditch. We have to do all these forms of worship in spirit and in truth. Two kinds of worship. True worship from the heart. From the heart. It's done by authority of God. Vain worship is not from the heart. It's usually from traditions of men. What I think, what I feel, what I believe. We have to be careful with that. New Christians and old Christians alike. We have to pay attention. As they say in sports or in boot camp or anything else, going back to the basics and understanding the basics, that's what we build our foundation on, the cornerstone of Christ and His teachings on how to live and worship God. So that's why we're studying this morning about one of the foundations that we have to stand on. The kind of music specified in the New Covenant, listen closely. The New Testament verses discussing music in worship. I'm going to name off a few. Matthew 26, 30. Talks about they sung songs. They were already, they had already sung. Acts 16, 25. They're singing. Romans 15, 9. It says, and sing. 1 Corinthians 14, 15. It says, pray and sing with understanding and spirit. In any study of what we're talking about, we need to go and get all the scriptures that pertain to that subject. And that's more or less what we're doing this morning. I want to know what God says, and I don't want to leave nothing out. I don't want to add anything to it. I just want to have a real close, secure understanding of God's Word on how do I sing to God to please Him. Colossians 3.16 says, sing. Ephesians 5.19 says, sing. Hebrews 2.12 says, sing. Hebrews 13.15 says, the fruit of your lips, what is that? Well, that's singing. James 5.13 says, sing. Sing. When, when Troy stood up here, when Mark was standing up here a little later, and he says, let us sing, he means let us worship in spirit and in truth from our lips from our heart, from the instruments that God made. He made my spirit, my heart, my thinking. As I'm praising Him, I'm doing it with my heart, 
with everything in me. And I am doing it with understanding, again in my spirit, but with my lips and my voice that God graciously gave to me. I'm trying to give glory to God as you are. This is how you study any topic of the Bible. You gather all the information you can from Scripture which will eliminate human opinions and ideas. Notice each verse mentions singing or the fruit of the lips. And what's not mentioned now is musical instruments. For those of you that don't know the John Deck family, if you think we don't like musical instruments, I ain't like bluegrass, man. I love it. And I'm definitely a country music uh, fan. Some of it. But I just love beautiful music. I just can't find the authority to do it in worship. So therefore, I'm going to simply go for what I can understand. Remember, 2 John verse 9. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ. What is that prayer? That's the teachings of Christ. Has both the Father and the Son. Well, I want to abide in Christ, don't you? How can I do that? i got to go by this right here. I have to. Revelation 22, 18, 19. We're all familiar with that. Don't add one word. That means don't add any idea you've got either. And don't take one word away trying to make people understand what you want them to understand. No, no, let's just go to the Word of God. It was written once and for all, Jude 3, and it's the perfect, complete law of liberty, James 1 25. And I'm not going to go beyond what is written, God, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. Just not going to do it. Notice also that we are told what to say. Ephesians 5 19. When we sang a while ago, I heard Mike singing bass behind me. He was speaking to me in psalms and in hymns and in spiritual songs. I heard him singing and making a melody in his heart to the Lord. I also heard your beautiful voices. And I love sometimes to move to different parts in here and hear your beautiful voices. Some I've heard, some I've heard in here, I'm going, man, I didn't know they could sing that good. They're actually speaking to me. They're speaking to me. I have to speak to you with what God has given me. I speak to you. We speak to one another. We're also speaking to God. Psalms is simply the heritage of the Jews which expresses deliverance and thanksgivings. Hymns, songs of praise, reverence, and adoration of God Almighty and Jesus. Spiritual songs, a song which correctly expresses the thoughts, facts, and emotions of Christianity. When we sing, it's coming from our hearts. We hear each other and God hears every word. That's what pleases Him. We're praising God. We're told how to sing with spirit and understanding. Again, 1 Corinthians 14, 15. <clears throat> With a melody where? Here, here, no, way down in here. In my, in my inner being, I'm making a melody in my heart to God and to you. With grace in the heart, Colossians 3.16. <coughs> grace means with thanksgiving in my heart. Thank you, God, for allowing me to be here today. Thank you for all the patience you've had all of my life for me to get to where I'm at now. I was so lost for so long. And I still struggle, Lord. I'm not close to perfect. Well, He's a patient God and a patient Father, and He's hanging in there with me. Let's look at some arguments for instrumental music that I've heard uh, in worship. Well, I just like it better. But if you think you like the piano and organ better than I do, you don't know me very well. I think the organ is one of the prettiest, if somebody knows how to play it, prettiest instruments that there is. I listen to it from time to time when I can ever find it. They don't play that much anymore, if you notice that. But I can't do it in worship. Why? Well, I can't find where I can. If I could, I probably would. I would all would. But if I can, I'm not. 
Well, I think I not. No, I won't. Since when we do allow our likes and dislikes to become our authority in religion, takes, I just think it's a better way out of the picture. Proverbs 4.12. There's a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way of death. We have to be so careful, brothers and sisters, not to let what we want or feel like or think get in the way of what God says. Because I'm not as smart, you're not as smart as He is. Even though it may seem right to me. Uh, how about this one? It doesn't make any difference as long as it does come from the heart. Well, that makes sense. It does. But this attitude, I'm sure that Nadab and Abihu had. In Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 and 2, remember the story. They loved God. They, were, they knew how to worship. These were priests. And they bought little canisters behind them full of, we're thinking, perfumes. Because when they made the sacrifice, they wanted to say, y'all are making regular sacrifices. I'm going to make it special because I think it's better and I think God will appreciate it more. And they poured the canister on the sacrifice that is described how to do it in the Holy Word of God to add to it. They did it from their hearts. It wasn't to be mean or test God. They wanted to say, God, we love you more than anybody does. And immediately, remember, fire consumed them. And they're gone. Let's be careful about adding what we think to anything. How about poor old Asa? You know, he reacted in a way that come from his heart. He's behind, he knows he's not supposed to touch that ark. Better not do that. Nobody touched the holiness, the purity of the ark. And this soldier's walking, and like a good soldier, they hit a ditch, and uh, he thought it was going to fall, and he reached up to grab it from his heart, not to test God, but to do what he thought was right. And he died on the spot. I don't listen to what God's got to say. It was used by David in the Old Testament, so why can't I do it? Well, yes, and so were animal sacrifices and burning of incense and the Passover. Are you going to do all that? Well, no. We can't pick and choose. It's, the Old Testament's not here, it's still here. We're no longer under the Old Testament, we're under the New Testament, Colossians 2.14. It was nailed to the cross, period. That means it's done. I live under the New Testament. Nothing they did before matters to me. First place I go to, you know where, because I don't have any cows to sacrifice anyway. I live under the New Testament. Hebrews 9 and 10, 10, 10 9 and 10. It says, He done away with the first testament, the, the old covenant, and he established the second. In answering the animal sacrifices once a year, that my sins are given once and for all. Jesus died on the cross so that He could remove all of our past sins once and for all. The whole context of chapter 10 is talking about them having to roll their sins forward year after year after year. And remember them over and over and over. And those, those, all those sacrifices could never get their sins forgiven. They were just rolling them forward finally. When Jesus died on the cross, all their sins were now forgiven. All their past sins. When we are baptized into Christ, all our past sins are forgiven once and for all. They'll never be brought up again. They're erased from the book of life. They're out of here. But we will continue to sin. That's why the little word called repentance is in there, boys and girls. We can continue as children of God to ask for forgiveness. And every time we do, He'll forgive us. <laughs> It seems someday instruments were used in the old law, so it's okay now. If that is true, then where are your animal sacrifices? And I'm the priest. You think I'm supposed to stand up here and cut a cow? There's two boys in here supposed to teach me how to gut a deer this year. I'm never good at a cow, deer, or anything else. So you got the wrong guy. I don't live under the Old Testament. We live under the new covenant, not the patriarchal age or the law of Moses. And as far as the instruments in heaven, I'm not in heaven yet. So let us abide and answer the commands given to us in the doctrine of Christ, the New Testament. Let's find the authority that is given to us in the New Testament. It is of significance to note that instrumental music, 
is not in worship. It was not brought into Christian worship until about 670 AD. This is history. Fact. And it was rejected in 670 AD. But finally brought for him for good in about 800 AD. If you want to have that study, we can. But this morning, I'm talking about something more important. I want God to hear me praising Him. Don't you? The Bible doesn't say not to. Well, that's a good excuse for a little bit. A lot of, the Bible doesn't say a lot of things. That don't give us the authority to do it. Let's look at that. The ark. It was made out of gopher wood. Genesis 6. That excludes using pine or oak. Uh, the Lord's Supper says the unleavened bread and the fruit of the vine, Matthew 6, 26 and 3, 29. That excludes hamburgers and cokes. How disappointing. <coughs> the law of exclusion. When we make the argument, we're rejecting what is known as the law of exclusion. We use the law of exclusion every day in our lives. When I go into a restaurant and I need to go to the restroom, I'm looking for the men's restroom. I know that's trying to be changed, but that's the way it's supposed to be. This is men's. This is women's. If I see men's, that excludes the women going in there, you know? Uh, when I order food at a restaurant and I say, yeah, I want cheese on my hamburger, I expect to have cheese on my hamburger. If I order it, this is the only way I want it. I want meat, lettuce, and tomato. That excludes anything else. <coughs> Sending our kids to the store. Go get a loaf of bread. They come back with a gallon of milk. I said go get a loaf of bread. That excludes everything else. Law of exclusion. Baptism. Water. Acts 36 and 1045. It excludes oil, gasoline, or anything else. You're to be baptized with water. John 3, 5, 5, 3 through 5. You, you know, if you're not baptized with water and spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. A period. That excludes coming up with some reason why you wouldn't be. God said, sing, Ephesians 19. This automatically excludes mechanical instruments, humming, uh, you know, it, just sing with understanding. I heard people say, well, nothing, we're still doing that with our mouth. Well, you know what? The problem with humming is, I can't understand what you're saying. We have to sing with understanding. If I hum, oh Lord thy God, how good, it's not going to work. We sing with understanding. Well, it's only an aid. You know, we do this so I can keep up with the music. Well, you really probably would do it here to drown out my music. That's what, and I wouldn't blame you. They say it is not any different than using a songbook or microphone. Well, Items are only aids if they help carry out the command, not add to the command. To use something of the same class in addition to what God has specified is to add to the Word of God. Back to, to the ark. Go for wood. Hammer and saw are aids. Pine and oak would be additions. Wouldn't it? You know what would happen to the ark, don't you? That bad boy is sunk. The Lord's table. Unleavened bread, fruit of the vine. Well, that's AIDS. AIDS is unleavened bread tray and the communion cups. AIDS to partake of the Lord's Supper. It helps us to do that. I'm glad we don't do the one cup, especially with all this COVID going on. You know. Milk and cookies? Well, that would be additions. This is all common sense. Sing and worship. Well, we can use books and microphones. And, yeah, but that's AIDS. Mechanical instruments would be an addition. The real issue about all this and the matter that we're talking about is just the horse upon which the real issue rode out of. Not in on. Out of. We need to stay with Scripture, boys and girls. We really do. The attitude. The basic the real basic issue is this. The correct attitude toward the Bible is striving to please God in worship. I want to please Him, don't you? I don't, want to, I don't want to gamble with my soul. So we do not only, uh, we do that for which we have biblical authority. And if we don't have it, we don't do it. 
Pretty simple. Are we at liberty to do anything we want to do, even though there's no authority for it or explicitly forbidden? Forbidden. That is why, and the only reason why, when you walk into this building or those of like faith that we don't have musical instruments, the old cliche, y'all hate them. I know most of you. Most of you here, the man that leads us in our singing this morning, Troy, he play a guitar like it's going out of style. But he don't do it here because he can't. We must fight the wrong attitudes that men have towards the Bible. We must fight the fruit of the attitude that people come up with. This sermon is not meant to intrude on anyone. But like any book of the Bible, God is very explicit in His teachings. And I'm afraid to change Him at all. So now we come to the invitation again. We've had plenty of new people come into the Lord in the past few weeks. But when you come up out of the watery grave of baptism described in Romans 6, 4 through 6, that's not the end. That's the beginning of your life. Now you've got to walk in the light. You've got to walk in Scripture. And one of those things you've got to learn is, is yes, you will fail. Anyone here that says it has no sin is a liar, God says. So we have sin. But any time that you sin as a child of God, like a child and his daddy here on earth, he wants to please his daddy. And every day he does something wrong. Today he spilled milk on the floor. Tomorrow he ate a candy bar and was told not to. But he keeps asking to mom and daddy to forgive him. Here we do the same thing. We'll mess up. But the word repentance is in there. I do not want to fall short. My faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing only the word of God. I do not want to mess up and do what God don't want me to. So if you need to repent of anything, you do it now. You can do it where you're sitting. If for some reason you need to come forward because it's a public sin, well, you need to and let us know uh, that you had sinned, but it's all straightened out. Well, God, we don't care what it was. It doesn't matter. We're not your judge. But it's a time that all of us need to look in our own hearts, not at the others, and see if there's anything we need to change. And don't forget the beautiful prayers of this congregation. Gorgeous. They come from right here. If you have a need for the prayers of this church, you can come forward as well as we stand and as we sing.